All right. <clears throat> we're set up. We're ready to go. And uh, <clears throat> I want to kind of pick up where we left off the last time uh, we did our Bible study and we talked about what a Christian needs to do whenever they're faced with any kind of difficult situation, uh, whatever it might be, whether you need an answer, uh, whether you just need uh, some direction, you need some comfort. I'm just looking at, good evening, Patricia. Uh, whatever you might need, what we had talked about was that you go to the Word of God. And I, and so what I started to do, um, is to share some scriptures that I use to, um, you know, whenever I need. Is to share some scriptures well, that I Well, let me turn that down. So, that's what I, I shared some last time. I shared out of John 14 out of Psalm 51, out of Matthew 6, which one of my favorites is in Matthew 6, uh, out of Psalm uh, 91, Hebrews 11, and Matthew chapter uh, chapter 11, uh, verse that we always like to quote, and then Romans 8, um, we shared some different scriptures. So didn't have time to finish it, so I said we'd do it the next time, and this is the next time. So we want to, I want you to take your Bibles and turn over to, um, to um, <clears throat> Psalm chapter 90. Let's, let's turn over there. Because sometimes we get in situations where uh, everything just looks big. You know, we talked Sunday about, about giants and how to kill giants. And the giants start small, but then they get big. And when they do... And, and not only giants, but things that can be a giant in our life. But mountains, you know, are great, great rivers and valleys and things like that. Uh, we are faced then with, with how do we, you know, how do we, how do we deal with those? And so I want to give you some scriptures. When something looks bigger... Uh, I want to give you some scriptures that will let you look at God and see that he's always bigger. And it's found in uh, Psalm chapter 9. I hope you're there. And you can read along with me because I'm coming right out of the scripture tonight. <clears throat> or I'm going to be flipping my Bible back and forth because that's what I do. If I need something and I need to hear a word from God, I need something. I get in his word. People say, well, God, God's not speaking. You know, God doesn't speak anymore. I beg to differ. He's speaking, he's still speaking because everything else will fade away, but the word of God remains. So he will he speaks through his word. If you want to hear from him, go to his word and you'll see what he has to say. And Moses prayed this prayer, and it's found in Psalm chapter 90. He said, Lord, you've been our dwelling place in all our generations, even now, listen, Moses is talking about this. And he's talking about the God that had been their dwelling place even when they were in Egyptian bondage. He said, before the mountains were brought forth, are you ever formed the earth and the world from everlasting to everlasting? You are God. So when things begin to look big, God is always bigger. And you can go to his word and see he says, you return man to dust. So we're, you know, and say, return, O children of man. For a thousand years in your sight are but as yesterday when it is past. Or as a watch in the night. In other words, it just goes by. A thousand years for us, we can't even imagine that. We can hardly even handle a thousand days that's out ahead of us. Much less a thousand years. But for God is nothing. And he says, you sweep men away as a flood like they are a dream. See, Moses is, is praying this prayer because he's been in bondage. He's seen God, a hand move, and he's seen God sweep his enemies away. He said, they are like grass that is renewed in the morning. In the morning it flourishes and renewed, and in the evening it fades and withers. For we 
we are brought to an end by your anger and by your wrath we are dismayed. You have set our iniquities before you. For all our days will pass under your wrath. We bring our years to an end. And then he says this, the years of our life are 70 or even by reason of strength, 80. Yet the span is but toil and trouble. Isn't that right? I mean, it, it, we here in this hard life, but he said, even those, even though they look long, in just a minute they'll be gone, and they'll and 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 we, he said, and we are fly away. Who considers the power of your anger or your wrath? See, he had seen the wrath of God on the enemies of Israel and on the enemies of God, so he knew what he was talking about when he said it, and. And I don't know who or what or how something may be coming against you and it may look big and it may seem like it's bigger than anything you've ever faced. But just remember this, that it doesn't compare. If it's your enemy, it's God's enemy and God destroys his enemies. So teach us, he said now, so teach us to number our days that we may get a heart of wisdom. Return, O oh Lord, how long have a pity on your servants? That sounds like us. How long is this going to go on? How long is this going to go on? He said, satisfy us in the morning with your steadfast love that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Make us glad for as many days as you have afflicted. As for many years we've seen this evil, let your work be shown to your servants and your glorious power to their children. Let the favor of the Lord our God be upon us and establish the works of our hands. Yes, establish the works of our hands. So when you get in a situation where you see something that just looks like, what can I do about this? This is bigger than me. I don't, I'm not smart enough. I don't have an answer. I don't know what to do then get into the Word of God and look right here. See, see the experience of what Moses said he had seen and how God was. And then you see his heart. He said, how long, O Lord? But then again, he goes on to pray and said, God, bless the works of our hand for you're great and mighty. So turn to the Word of God. Turn to him for anything. Listen, if you feel like uh, there's more bills than there is money. Come on, somebody. You know what I'm talking about. Uh, that that the bills are long, this long, and the money is that long. The stack of bills is that high, and the, and the stack of money is. And you know, and we can all complain about it. And we've all seen bad times. It seems like right now, uh, you know. We have this thing called inflation and prices are going up. And so what do you do? Well, Psalm 37, David says, fret not yourself because of evildoers. Don't be envious of wrongdoers for they'll soon fade like the grass. Ain't that a theme tonight? And wither like the green herb. And then what he says here, this is what we do. We turn to the God. We turn to God, and we see people prospering, and people cheating, and people lying, and people taking money and using it for ungodly things, and you know, just raising your taxes and and just doing all kind of stuff. He said, "Don't fret about that, because they're going. They here today. They're gone tomorrow." But then he says, "This trust in the Lord and do good." Dwell in the land and befriend faithfulness. See that? Be a friend to faith. Make faith your companion. And be faithful in what you do and how you serve and how you love and how you give and how you live. Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Not what you need. I mean, not what you want, but what you need. Your heart's desire. And so my question for you tonight is, what does your heart desire? What is it? Because 
if it is on things that are not of God, my friend, he, he's not going to give that to you. But if you desire the things of God and you desire things that will benefit the kingdom and bless other people, he give you that. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in Him. That's what you need to do. When the price of gas goes up to $4, and I believe it will, it'll probably go above $4, then you need to trust in the Lord. And when groceries get, get high, God will make a way. Yeah, God will make a way. He'll bring forth your righteousness as the lightning and your justice as noonday. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Fret not yourself over the one who prospers in his way. A lot of people cutting corners, lying, cheating, stealing, uh, and holding back the love of God. They're not generous anymore toward people who are in need or to the Lord because they won't hold on to that. But if they do that, God can't bless them. Don't, so if you see them doing it, don't worry about them. Just let God handle them. And, and refrain from anger, he said, and forsake wrath. And fret not yourself. See, he says that. Keep saying that over and over and over again. Don't be anxious. Don't, don't fret over it. <clears throat> it. If you do, it says in verse 8, it tends only to evil. So worrying and fretting and watching what other people are doing instead of putting your eyes on God, it, it, only, it only leads to evil for you. Because the evildoers are going to be cut off in verse 9. But those that wait upon the Lord will inherit the land. And then he says <clears throat> in verse 11, the meek shall inherit the land. Jesus said that the meek will inherit the earth. And then better is a little in verse 16 that the righteous has than the abundance of, of, of many wicked. The Lord knows the days of the blameless and their heritage will remain forever. They are not put to shame in evil times, the righteous, he's saying. In the days of famine, look at this, they will have abundance. The wicked, and on the other hand, is, he goes on to say that it's going to be hard on them. But now, look at this in verse 23. The steps of a man are established by the Lord when he delights in his way. Though he fall, now see, that's why he's saying, make faithfulness your friend. Uh, join in. Trust in the Lord. Be close to being faithful and good and generous and kind and serving God and walking in ways of righteousness. He said, if you'll do that, he said that your ways are established. And watch this. Though he fall, he shall not be cast headlong. That's a righteous man. For the Lord upholds his head. I have been young. Now look at this. And now I am old. Yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken or his seed begging for bread. He is ever lending generously and his children become a blessing. That's what he says. In the days of famine, in the days of hardship, that's what he said in verse 19, in the days of famine you'll have abundance if you cling to righteousness. And wait for the Lord and keep his way, and he will exalt you to inherit the land. You will not look on the wicked as they are cut off. And so this is what he's saying. And then verse 39. So I'm just saying, you turn to the Word of God, you look at the Word of God, you read the Word of God, and the Word of God encourages you, causes your faith to grow. And listen, we're all going to have thoughts, and we're all going to, to doubt, and we're all going to complain, and we're all going to fret. We, we're going to do that because we're human. But when we begin to do that, then turn to the Word of God, and the doubt will turn to faith and belief. And the complaining will turn to praise. And the fretting will turn to peace. If you will go to the word of God.
because he says in verse 39, the salvation of the righteous is from the Lord. He is their stronghold in the time of trouble. The Lord helps them and delivers them. He delivers them from the wicked and saves them because they take refuge in him. So again, turn to God. Trust in God. Put your focus on God. Your faith on God. Re continue in serving the Lord with gladness and with goodness and with faithfulness. Continue in serving the Lord and watch what he does. Watch how he answers. Watch what he does in your life. And, and he... <clears throat> it, and he will keep you and he will he'll he'll be with you. So when your pockets get a little empty, turn to turn to uh, Psalm 37. And then one of, I think probably all of our favorites we can and we can all quote it, but I'm gonna turn there to it, is um Psalm Psalm twenty-three. When you sometimes you just feel lonely, sometimes you just feel fearful, sometimes you just feel all alone, sometimes you just feel like you're right by yourself. When when that happens, turn to Psalm 23 and look at what he says: "The Lord is my shepherd; oh, I shall not want." And so when we look at that now. I mean, we're looking at this like 3,500 years from the time it was written or something like that. 25 to 3,500. And we're looking at this, and we live in a society where when we say shepherd, it doesn't ring to us uh, what, it, what it meant to the people who live in a society where shepherds are prominent and they understand what shepherds do. But this one statement can really help you if you understand what David is saying when he says, the Lord is my shepherd. David was a shepherd. He understood what a shepherd. A shepherd, and Jesus talked about that. A shepherd will, will guard the flock. A shepherd will lay down his life for the flock. A shepherd will... Make sure of these things. Now, this is what a shepherd will do. He said, I shall not want because the Lord is my shepherd. Because the shepherd makes me to lie down in a green pasture. What does that mean? That means he puts me right, right where good food is. And where good food is, if you'll notice herd animals, when they are, when they are peaceful and contented and well fed and well watered, they'll lay down. Now lay down. And he says he makes me to lie down in green pasture. He leads me beside the still waters. In other words, away from the troubled waters to still waters. Because sheep don't like the troubled waters. And he puts us. So he understands. He restores my soul and leads me in the right path. In paths of righteousness. In other words, he's going to take me away from the path that leads to danger. And put me on a path of safety. And, and though, and he, and for his name's sake. Now, <clears throat> it says here, and this is for you if you're lonely and you just feel all alone and you just, sometimes we feel that way. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. He said, so, so understand this. I can walk with him all the time. But to the extreme that I'm in the fearful, and I'm in probably one of the hardest places of my life. Can't, you know, the shadow of death. He said, I won't fear any evil. Why? And this is the key. Because you are with me, O oh good shepherd. Aren't you glad of that? I am. And then he says, your rod and your staff, they bring me comfort. In other words, a rod to correct me or guide me or lead me. If it, just knowing that it's there, the strength of the shepherd. 
that it, it comforts me. And then let's just go on and read the rest of it. For you prepare before a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, and my cup runneth over overflow. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. <coughs> Sometimes I'll just quote that. Sometimes I'll just sing it to myself. I'll put a tune to it and just sing it to myself. And it does all these things. It brings comfort to me, brings peace to me, brings joy to me. I don't fear. I've walked through a lot of hard things, and I have it written here on my Bible, in my Bible, July the 2nd, 2017. The Lord spoke this word, that word in verse number four to me, even though I walked through the valley of the shadow of death and I had no way of knowing what was going, what was going to happen. But I knew that he spoke to me that day and he said, son, sometimes you're just going to have to walk through something, but never fear, I'll walk through it with you. See, that's what knowing the word of God to do. And he brought that to me and that day my nephew was paralyzed from the waist down. And just to, and just to, few weeks, a good friend of mine was in a car accident and later died. In a few more weeks, another good friend of mine suddenly died. And then in just a few weeks, my mother had a stroke. And about a month after that, she died. And God had given me this word on July the 2nd, 2017. That's what the Word of God will do. That's how He'll bring you comfort. And that's how He'll bring you strength. I'm just checking my time. I probably got about five or six more minutes. So I'll just stay here and, and in Psalm 23. He will give you contentment. He will give you peace. He will lead you in the right way. He will, he will lead you in correction, and he will rebuke you, and he will exhort you. He will give you healing. He will give you blessings, and he will give you hope. All that is found right there in that one scripture. So if you did, if you couldn't do anything else, you know, you ever, anybody ever have? I thought I had one in here, one of those little Bibles. I got one in here somewhere that I had when I was just a little kid. I've got my first Bible my aunt gave me. Uh, and I, I used to carry a little pocket New Testament with Psalms and Proverbs in it. And some of them would have just the 23rd Psalm in it, you know. And I, I used to carry that in my pocket when I, uh, on the job I had, I always wore a long sleeve shirt with a pocket on it. And uh, because that's what I liked. And um, I kept that Bible right there, a little thin New Testament. I probably couldn't use it now because I can't see that good anymore. But then it brought me comfort a many days until, you know, I learned it. And, uh, but I still like to just go and read it from the, from the Word of God. So I would encourage you to do that. And I'll give you some more scriptures the next time we're together. I, got, I think I got about five more. And, you know, when I get on them, I just start talking about them. But I just wanted to give you some of these tonight, and I believe I'll help you. Because we all go through all these things. We have sorrow. Uh, we have all sinned and come short of the glory of God. Even after we've been saved, we'll sin, and we'll have to come back and repent and know that God is going to, His grace is going to cover us, going to give us forgiveness if we confess and and we all worry, we all get angry, we all get mad, we all complain. Uh, sometimes our faith gets on, in a low ebb and just needs to be stirred up. Sometimes we just need a little rest and a little peace. Just a little break from it all. All of these things, there's places to go in the Word of God. And you can find them. I've, gave you, I've given you some and you can find them on your own. I tell you what happens to me is 
you got uh, you got stuff that's taught and some that's bought. The things that's bought usually have more value than the things that are taught. Sometimes you understand what I'm saying. There's sometimes you can be looking in the Word of God and it will just come out. And when it does, when it does me that way, it belongs to me. I say, man, that's mine. I just get the understanding of it. And so I would encourage you, just turn to the Word of God. If you don't understand it all, just keep looking at it. Holy Spirit will give you revelation. John 14 said he'd do that. He teach you in all things. So I just want to do that. And again, next week, I'll give you four or five more. And we'll just look at this Word. Uh, this is the month of November. It's the time to that we should be giving thanks, you know. Uh, we jump on up to Christmas, and but uh, and that's fine too because you know it's got Christ in it. But uh, and we just need to take a moment. Next week will uh, uh, will be Veterans Day of uh, Thursday week, and remember all those who sacrifice. A lot of things we can give thanks for as a as people, as a nation, and as family. So I encourage you to do that. I encourage you to turn to the Word of God. And I'm glad you joined me tonight. I don't, I don't think we had too many people on here with us, but we had you. So we're glad that you joined us. I love you guys. I hope to see some of you soon. Debbie and I will be back Thursday, and we'll, we'll have a prayer time. And then uh, we'll, uh, we'll have uh, Sunday service. We've been having a great time on Sunday. And God has really been working in the lives of people. So I'd love to see you then. But if I don't see you soon, I'll probably see y'all then. Hopefully, I'll see you later. I love you so much, though. And I pray for you and ask God to bless you.